Now comes the real Tour de Force. Tricky and wicked, of course. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 animated villain songs. There's one thing that I know. You gotta give all people what they want. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable times in animated films where the bad guys sang their hearts out. Which of these villainous tunes do you always find yourself revisiting? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Holding Out for a Hero, Shrek 2. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to dedicate this song to Princess Fiona and Prince Shrek. Most of us grew up believing that fairy godmothers were good, pure creatures who would always protect good over evil. But then Shrek 2 came in hot and shattered those illusions, giving us the meanest, most two-faced fairy godmother ever. She may be rotten to her core, but we can't deny that she knows how to work a stage. Still, she's not entertaining us out of the goodness of her heart when she theatrically belts out this classic tune. No, she's trying to make sure that Charming, who's pretending to be Shrek, ends up with Fiona. The irony of the song choice certainly isn't lost on us, and neither are her cruel intentions. But we also can't help but jam along. Number 19, Big and Loud, Cats Don't Dance. You know a villainous tune is good when it has a reprise, and that's exactly what we get here. This number requires two sections to fully shine, and we're definitely not complaining. They like it big, they like it loud, maybe a little bit jazzy sometimes. Darla Dimple may be adorable, but she's far from being a sweet, innocent child. The song's first part sees her singing to Danny, and it's jazzy, secretly malicious, and addictive but she drops the facade after he leaves, and that's when things get super real. I didn't get where I am today by letting myself get pushed around. The second part of the track makes it clear that the only person she's interested in helping is herself. Everyone else is in for a scheme of epic proportions. You know what they say, Hollywood's a ruthless business. They're gonna fall free. <laughs> Number 18, No More Mr. Nice Guy, The Swan Princess. You would think turning Odette into a swan would be enough, but Rothbart isn't going to stop there because he can't have anything or anybody breaking the curse. That means making sure Derek doesn't declare a vow of everlasting love to Odette at the upcoming ball. I can't wait to watch their poor hearts breaking. So much for politically correct. And what would an evil plot be without a musical number to accompany it? Set against a cheery backdrop, No More Mr. Nice Guy puts Rothbart's dark magic front and center, as he uses it to make his henchwoman Bridget look like Odette. Up to no good, I love plotting. Cause I'm so good when I'm rotten No more Mr. Nice Guy, wait and see He's confident, determined, and utterly creepy in the best way. He was never really Mr. Nice Guy to begin with, but this song proved that we had just scratched the surface of his wicked ways. I'll become that nasty, naughty, petty, spiteful, wicked, wayward, way delightful bad guy I was born to be. <laughs> Number 17, Savages, Pocahontas. If you weren't scared of Governor Ratcliffe when he sang Mine, 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 chances are you got spooked when Savages started. And we don't blame you, because it's addictive and frightening all at once. What can you expect from filthy little heathens? Here's what you get when races are diverse! 
Ratcliffe convinces his fellow settlers that war is the only option, and the frenzy just keeps building from there. Meanwhile, the Powhatan people prepare to fight. Savages, savages, barely even human. Savages, savages, killers at the core. Pretty soon, the two groups' voices merge into one as they utter the words to this battle cry. The fiery visuals further drive the point home, making each lyric feel more pointed and deadly. The result is a number that fills us with a sense of dread, and only Pocahontas' determination to save John Smith can calm us down. Number 16, How Bad Can I Be? The Lorax. The Lorax acts as a cautionary tale, showing viewers exactly what can happen when humans put personal interests above the planet's well-being. And perhaps nowhere is that message more obvious than in this track. Everybody out there, you take care of yours and me. I'll take care of mine, 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 mine. Shake that bottom line. Let me. As the one slur justifies his actions in the flashback, it becomes increasingly clear what happens when profit is deemed more important than the environment. The scariest part of all is that harmful acts of pollution were framed as something normal and necessary, as opposed to villainous. The animal that wins got a scratch and fight and claw and bite and punch. And the animal that doesn't, well, the animal that doesn't winds up someone else's la 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 la. It's this disconnect that makes How Bad Can I Be so harrowing. The lyrics, juxtaposed with the dark visuals, answer the title question. And the number is sure to stop and make anybody think. How bad? How bad can this possibly be? Number 15, The World's Greatest Criminal Mind, The Great Mouse Detective. Whether or not Radigan is actually the world's greatest criminal mind is debatable, especially given the fate he suffers at the end of the movie. But we can all likely agree that he's among the most terrifying and musically gifted criminal minds in animated movie history. My earlier crimes were fine for their times, but now that I'm at it again. An even grimmer plot has been simmering in my great criminal brain. The elegant bad guy takes us through some of his past schemes and guarantees that what's coming next will outshine them all. And he's a pretty persuasive creature. And now, as you were singing... <laughs> even louder, the shouting, no one can doubt what we know you can do. Watching him seamlessly switch gears between that deadly interlude and the number's extravagant finish always sends shivers down our spines. Oh, Radigan, your bragging about the crime to top all crimes has given us a villain song we won't soon forget. Radigan! Radigan! Hey! Number 14, Love is an Open Door, Frozen. Who doesn't love a good, honest love song? Well, apparently, Hans isn't a huge fan, because he had no problem using one to lie to Anna and move his plan along. But with you, but with you I found my place. I see your face, and, and it's, it's nothing, nothing like I've, I've ever known before. Now, of course, the tune itself is infectious and fun-filled, which makes the fact that he's secretly playing a game that much harder to digest. We can't exactly blame Anna for believing him and getting swept up in the moment. If we're being honest, we did too. Say goodbye, Say goodbye to, to the pain of the, of the past. We don't have to feel it anymore. Sure, we thought they were moving a little fast, but it seemed like standard Disney fare. This song is a huge part of what makes the reveal that Hans is actually a villain so shocking. That's why it's so disturbingly effective. Life can be so much more with you. With you. Number 13, Toxic Love, Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. Freed from the tree that served as his prison, the dark spirit Hexus sings this despicable ode to sweet, sweet destruction. I do believe we are destined to be soul mates. His enthusiasm for diesel clouds and noxious muck shows how much he relishes watching humans ruin the environment. 
in a way that's almost sensual. Oil and grime, poison sludge, diesel clouds and noxious muck. For this villain, destroying nature is intoxicating, pun intended. Of course, the song's excellence owes a lot to Hexus's vocal actor, the legendary Tim Curry. Slime beneath me, moon, slime up above. Ooh, you love my oh. toxic love. Curry has had plenty of experience portraying diabolical and eccentric characters and was the perfect choice to put a little extra oomph in this twisted love song serenading environmental ruin. Number 12, Oogie Boogie's song, The Nightmare Before Christmas. If we ever met Santa Claus, we'd probably jump for joy and offer him a cozy seat along with some milk and cookies. But Oogie Boogie isn't really the Christmas type. Not only does he keep Santa in uncomfortable and restrictive positions, but he rips him to shreds with this track. He's ancient. He's ugly. I don't know which is worse. I might just split a seam now if I don't die laughing first. The bearded fellow tries his best to be let go, but to no avail. Oogie Boogie has no trouble asserting his dominance, towering over Santa both literally and figuratively as he sings this zippy tune. It's much more fun, I must confess, when lives on the line. Not mine, of course, but yours, oh boy. Now let it be just fine. His energy and assurance take things to the next level, making The Grinch seem like a delight in comparison. Oogie Boogie's song really is the stuff of nightmares, and we love it. It's hopeless. You're finished. You haven't got a prayer. Cause I'm Mr. Oogie Boogie, and you ain't going nowhere. Number 11, Shiny, Moana. We know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but Tamatoa is just so shiny we can't help ourselves. That, combined with his bold and saucy attitude, infuses this musical number with irresistible wit and pizzazz. Fish are dumb, dumb, dumb. They chase anything that glitters. Beginners. Oh, and here they come, come, come to the brightest thing that glitters. He doesn't hold back, and it's fabulous. Yes, he's trying to take Moana and Maui down, but he's also giving them a show. Shiny is a tantalizing piece that's as grand and enticing as they come. I'll never hide. I can't. I'm too shiny. Watch me dazzle like a diamond in the rough. Strut my stuff. My stuff is so shiny. It's no wonder the song's official video has been viewed over 500 million times on YouTube. If Tomatoa ever decides to switch career paths, we're sure Broadway would be happy to have him. We just have one question. Who is his jeweler, and can we please get their number? You'll never be quite as shiny. You wish you were nice and shiny. Number 10, Cruella DeVille, 101 Dalmatians. Roger Radcliffe has been looking for lyrics for his new song, and he may have found the perfect inspiration. The devil woman herself, Cruella DeVille. Cruella DeVille. That's it. Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil. If she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. Along with a smooth tempo and sinister rhythm, the lyrics don't pull any punches, describing Cruella as an evil, malevolent creature. Roger was always suspicious about her, and it turns out he and his jazzy heckling were right on the ball. She's like a spider waiting for the kill. Roger, Look she'll out. hear you. Cruella de Vil. The ultimate kicker is that Roger's mocking tune becomes a big hit and makes his family more money than he could have imagined. On top of that, it serves as a delightful roasting of an iconic villain. Let her in, Nanny. Anita, darling! How are you? Miserable, darling, as usual. Perfectly wretched. Number 9. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. It's the despicable track we always look forward to during the holidays. 
As we watch the Grinch performing his sinister schemes, we're treated to this fun and catchy little tune where every verse roasts the green trickster in every way imaginable. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. Written by Dr. Seuss himself, the lyrics don't hold back as they describe how deplorable, disgusting, and dastardly our leading character is. And yet, we still can't help but love him. This devilishly enjoyable Christmas tune is made even better thanks to the deep bass voice of Thurl Ravenscroft, while other versions of the song definitely brought something unique. Your heart's an empty it's hard to hold a candle to the original tune that made insulting scoundrels so much fun. Number 8. Mother Knows Best, Tangled Empty nest syndrome is a real thing, but Goffle's not Rapunzel's mother, she's her kidnapper. And she's not trying to protect her by keeping her locked inside the tower, either. She's only interested in the blonde hair's magical properties. Of course, she can't tell Rapunzel, who's longing to head outside any of that. That's where Mother Knows Best comes in. Mother knows best. Take it from your mumsy. On your own, you won't survive. Sloppy, underdressed, immature, clumsy, please. They'll eat you up alive. Gothel takes the age-old adage and pairs it with a stimulating melody in an attempt to spook the wanderlust right out of Rapunzel. Ruffians, thugs, poison ivy, quicksand, cannibals and snakes, <gasps> the plague. No! Yes. The number plays out within the tower, which is already jail-like enough as it is. Yet the song makes the space feel even more suffocating with its faux caring nature and alarmist lyrics. It's absolutely petrifying, and we're seriously impressed. Don't forget it, you regret it, mother knows best. Number 7. Playing with the Big Boys, The Prince of Egypt Upon his return to Egypt, Moses demonstrates the power of his god to Pharaoh Ramesses II. Behold, the power of God. Oh, uh, impressive. More amused than frightened, Ramesses has high priests Hotep and Hoy show him what their gods are capable of. So you think you've got friends in high places with the power to put us on the run. Well, forgive us these smiles on our faces. You'll know what power is when we are done. Their demonstration is a confident, intimidating spectacle of smoke and mirrors, magic tricks, and creative wordplay sent to Middle Eastern-tinged music. Hotep and Hoy are certain that their deities reign supreme over anyone Moses chooses to follow, and have no qualms trying to knock him down a few pegs. Stop this foolish mission! What's a true magician? Give an exhibition how? Pick up your silly twig boy. You're playing with the big boys now. Of course, their attempts to undercut Moses are in vain, but at least they know how to dazzle with their oversized egos and pulse-pounding imagery. Number 6. Gaston, Beauty and the Beast There's no man in town <laughs> as admired as you. You're everyone's favorite guy. Everyone's awed and inspired by you, and it's not very hard to see why. No one sings their own praises like Gaston. After being embarrassed by Belle, LeFou tries to cheer Gaston up by leading a lively waltz in the bar. The lyrics, of course, regaling the crowd with how amazing he is. No one spin like Gaston, looking big like Gaston. No one's got us well cleft in his gym like Gaston. As a specimen, yes, I'm intimidating. I wanna go to Gaston. It certainly does the trick of lifting Gaston's spirits and stroking his ego, but then it shifts into him plotting out how to make Belle marry him. 
and the townsfolk still cheer him on. Guess it just goes to show that you can get away with anything if you have a catchy enough song and a charismatic personality. For there's no one as burly and brawny. As you see, I've got biceps to spare. Not a bit of him scraggly or scrawny. That's right. And every last inch of me's covered with hair. No wonder the villagers were so willing to join Gaston's little manhunt with the mob song. Number 5. Friends on the Other Side – The Princess and the Frog It takes a charismatic song to sway someone into a deal with the devil, and Keith David definitely nails it as Dr. Facilier. Don't you disrespect me, little man. Don't you derogate or deride. You're in my world now, not your world. And I got friends on the other side. He lures Prince Naveen and Lawrence into his home with a sinister, jazzy beat that sends shivers down your spine, promising that he can fulfill all their wishes. I can read your future. I can change it around some too. I look deep into your heart and soul. You do have a soul, don't you, Lawrence? Make your wildest dreams come true. When they have a deal, everything explodes into a demonic, colorful extravaganza as Naveen is turned into a frog. Evil or not, the Shadow Man definitely knows how to put on a show, with one of the most haunting, toe-tapping numbers of all time. Just a little more time! Number 4. In the Dark of the Night, Anastasia Now my dark purpose will be fulfilled, and the last of the Roman Orphs will die! His power restored, Rasputin is more eager than ever to eliminate the last surviving member of the Romanov family, Anastasia. With the help of a chorus of insects, he sings out his goal for vengeance with a hellish theatrical rock anthem as he prepares for his ultimate scheme. I was once the most mystical man in all Russia. When the royals betrayed me, they made a mistake. My curse made each of them pay, but one little girl got away. Little Anya, beware, Rasputin's awake. The haunting choir and driving rhythm adds a nice level of zest to this track adding a frightening chill and renewed fear for Anya's safety. While Christopher Lloyd, Rasputin's voice actor, didn't provide the vocals, his singing stand-in Jim Cummings does a phenomenal job of carrying the tune and really capturing the Dark Wizard's depraved obsession with settling the score. In the dark of the night, terror will strike her. Terror's the least I can do! In the dark of the night, She will feel that her nightmares are real. In the dark of the night, she'll be thrown. Number three, Poor Unfortunate Souls, The Little Mermaid. I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me well a witch. Remember that deal with the devil issue we talked about? Well, the same rules apply under the sea. Ariel takes that risk when she goes to Ursula's grotto for a chance to be with the human she loves. The sea witch tempts the naive mermaid with a slow, gothic tune claiming that she only wants to help, but the menacing undertones and music arrangements say otherwise. Poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. This one longing to be thinner, that one wants to get the girl, and do I help them? Yes, indeed. That uneasy feeling only gets worse when the song's pace picks up and eventually explodes into a terrifying eruption of colors as the deal is made. She may be deceitful, but we can't deny that Ursula knows how to do business, with a Broadway and burlesque flair. Come on, you poor unfortunate soul! Go ahead! Make your choice! I'm a very busy woman and I haven't got all day! It won't cost much! Just your voice! Number 2. Hellfire – The Hunchback of Notre Dame The Hunchback of Notre Dame is one of the most risqué Disney films of all time, tackling subjects such as religious hypocrisy, ethnic persecution, and lust. Fun for the whole family, right? We see these themes beautifully displayed in Judge Frollo's captivating song Hellfire. Beata Maria, you know I'm so much purer than the common, vulgar, weak, licentious crowd. 
Here, Frollo confronts his inner demons, trying to justify his horrific actions by blaming them all on Esmeralda, the woman of his sinful desires. Then tell me, Maria, why I see her dancing there, why her smoldering eyes still scorch my soul. The horrific imagery perfectly matches his twisted mindset, while the haunting music, complete with a hellish choir, chills viewers to the bone. Like fire, hell fire, this fire in my skin, this burning desire is turning me to sin. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Be Prepared – The Lion King Scar has a plan to commit his most despicable act ever so that he can finally be crowned king, and he'll need the help of his army of hyenas. What are you supposed to do? Kill Mufasa? Precisely. How does he motivate them? Why, with an intense and conniving anthem that doubles as a declaration of war, of course. The song is so powerful that Scar's actor, Jeremy Irons, actually developed vocal problems during recording, leaving Jim Cummings to bring it home. And boy, does he deliver. I know it sounds sordid, but you'll be rewarded when at last I am given my dues. And injustice deliciously square. Couple that with malevolent lighting and colors, and imagery straight out of the Third Reich, and we're left with the ultimate villainous musical number. And though nothing can quite live up to be prepared, Zira manages to give us major chills in the sequel. A symphony of death, oh my, that's my lullaby. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.